A very, very good morning to you. If you have just joined us, this is Why in the Morning, your favorite breakfast show, of course, on your favorite channel. That is channel Y254. My name is Valentine, or at Color Me Val. No, I was not born on Valentine's Day, but it's about to be that season. So please feel free, feel free to my two mobile money. In fact, if you send me something, I promise you, mobile money will never hang again. Ever. Yeah? And you can put that on something. <laughs> our hashtag of the day is at MCM, where we crush on our men. Or the generic hashtag, why in the morning. Now, uh, we just started the intro, if you just joined us halfway through, or, well, some ways through, not halfway just yet, but with Stephanie Ayeta and, of course, Brian Sakwa 101. And we have decided that January, we are living it to the fullest. Now, don't tell anyone but Steph's birthday tomorrow, so please prepare yourself, okay? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I've got someone very special in a studio. Very, I'm looking for the adjective. I'll, I'll give it to you in a bit, but let me allow him to introduce himself. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, viewers. Uh -huh. My name is Chris Ostom Xavier Harvey. Mm -hmm. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya mm -hmm. and also a council member of the Law Society of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes. Poised, that's the word. You're very poised. <laughs> yes, he has an air about him. Yes. All right. Tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into the youth and affairs conversation today. Oh, well, um, I, I like to say that I'm a very simple, quiet person. Mm -hmm. um, of course, an advocate. Mm -hmm. I practice here in Nairobi, uh, generally uh, commercial law and tax law. Whoa. And uh, in the Law Society of Kenya, I convene the tax uh, committee mm -hmm. and I'm very proud that in the past two years mm -hmm. we've been able to do uh, we've been able to advance what we call tax justice in mm -hmm. Kenya mm -hmm. and that's why you've been seeing things like um, you know the petition to stop um, the finance bill mm -hmm. and um, other interventions we are making with the Kenya Revenue Authority mm -hmm. in order to make sure that our taxes are or the taxes that Kenyans pay mm -hmm. are you know um, are reasonable taxes mm -hmm. yeah yes okay I want to touch on that tax uh, situation before we we draw the map and figure out why why it feels like there's a certain struggle between the executive and the judiciary where they're supposed to be you know arms of the same government yes, yes. Uh, but I, I'd like to believe when we look at other countries or let's say other we are a third world Yes, quote unquote, yes. unfortunately. But so, so we look at second world and first world countries. Yes, their taxes are quite, uh, I don't want to say on the high side, but you, you can feel the, the taxes in your general day to day movements, right? Yes. But you look at the pla uh, place like the States, uh, they have unemployment. So if you're not employed, you go receive a check every month, you mm -hmm. know. There is free education mm -hmm. in places like uh, Sweden and them. Um, so, how, why isn't that translating? to us? Why are just the taxes high? Why are we not feeling the benefits? Well, unfortunately, in Kenya, we have a scourge called corruption. Oh, yes. <laughs> you just went into it. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, we have a scourge called corruption, mm -hmm. and that really messes up um, the way we collect taxes mm -hmm. and taxes which are supposed to be for the benefit of uh, Kenyans. Mm -hmm. We have many, many loans which um, the country, the government is currently servicing. But, um, you know, the question that always revolves around um, the mind of, a, of an ordinary Kenyan mm -hmm. is where, where does this money go? Mm -hmm. Where does this money go? And it really starts from the budgeting process mm -hmm. where we are budgeting for corruption we are budgeting for in inflated prices. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really why even when you drive around Nairobi, mm -hmm. you get potholes. Mm -hmm. uh, when, um, when the governor is speaking about um, mitigating against floods, mm -hmm. we do not see that kind of mitigation mm -hmm. taking place. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really, really unfortunate because um, this is taxpayers, uh, this is tax that Kenyans pay. Mm -hmm. And I would say about 40, 40 to 60% of, of the money that Kenyans usually make 
go into taxes. Mm -hmm. The other, the other, the other forty percent goes into loans and um, things for personal development, mm -hmm. um, rent, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So Kenyans remain with very little mm -hmm. for them to, you know, you know even grow themselves. A uh, very, very unfortunate situation, but it's really caused from corruption. And what I'd want to encourage, mm -hmm. encourage, you know, the government to do, and, um, you know, other, other stakeholders like the Law Society of Kenya mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the private sector to do, mm -hmm. is really to educate people about what corruption really is, mm -hmm. what it means. Mm -hmm. When you educate people, Kenyans, right from primary school, secondary school, mm -hmm. university, mm -hmm. continuous professional development about what corruption really is, mm -hmm. they get to understand what it does, mm -hmm. all forms of corruption, and then they get to shun it. Mm -hmm. so, th that's the only way in my personal opinion, uh -huh. the kind of tax that we are paying right now is going to be able to make sense. Uh -huh. It's good that the government is um, is paying, is going to uh, is uh, making efforts towards paying uh, loans that were taken, uh -huh. but it needs to balance. Uh -huh. uh, there needs to be a kind of policy where there is a balance between the payment of the loans and money injected back into the economy mm -hmm. for growth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it arguable that the ideal capitalistic mm -hmm. model is things trickle down? Yes. Mm -hmm. So is it is it something that we can say that there are people who are whether I'd, I'd quote Animal Farm because His Excellency actually did at one point. He has so many appearances in the media, it's kind of confusing. But he did say something about Animal Farm. And if you've read the book, it, it, it alludes to uh, some, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than yeah, others. No, that's, yeah. So that's where you have a situation where the, the rich are increasing and while the rest are, you know, either remaining where they are or kind of being left out in the development process. Is that what's going on? Uh, yeah, certainly. Certainly it is because, um, you see, the kind, of, um, the kind of education that corruption in Kenya has taught us, especially within the last 20 years, is that the most corrupt people mm -hmm. and the big corruption actually involves the rich. Mm -hmm. And you get the rich doing very big kinds of corruption, which the middle class do not do. They do, the middle class do the middle kind of corruption, mm -hmm. and they want to go up to the top. Ah. And then you get the, the ordinary mwananchi, mm -hmm. uh, the lower class people, mm -hmm. doing the lower class kind of corruption. Mm -hmm. let, me tell you, um, let me tell you an example of corruption. A matatu driver. Mm -hmm. We have ro we have roads in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, um, traffic laws in Kenya, and um, they say that someone is not supposed to overlap. Mm -hmm. But you get this person overlapping, and right at the corner there, mm -hmm. you find a police officer Oof. who might also be at the lower, maybe a lower middle class, lower uh, cadre in the society. Mm -hmm who takes a bribe of 50 shillings mm -hmm. because this, uh, this Matatu driver has overlapped. Mm -hmm. You see, that is, and I think I'm going to say a lot about corruption because it's a scourge. Mm -hmm. And unless we are very serious about fighting it, very serious about fighting it by first educating ourselves what in our daily lives corruption actually means mm -hmm. we're never gonna end it mm -hmm. and it will just be the animal farm um day in day out mm -hmm. and nothing is ever the the more things change the more they'll remain the same mm -hmm. yeah That's and I, mm -hmm. i'm sorry but um let me say something about um about the current government mm -hmm. the current government when it was campaigning mm -hmm they said that they are going to get rid of corruption. Mm -hmm. 
they said that they are going to uphold the rule of law. Mm -hmm. uh, they are going to respect court orders. And I remember there's a time that um, the Law Society of Kenya seemed to be the only institution in Kenya which was um, which was challenging the government because we did not have, so to speak, an official opposition. So we were talking against the excesses of the previous regime. Mm -hmm. And the current regime was supporting us uh, in doing that. But what we are seeing right now mm -hmm. is the current regime getting frustrated mm -hmm. because of their own actions of, um, you know, flouting the constitution, mm -hmm. uh, refusing to follow the law, we justifiably take matters to court mm -hmm. and they are stopped or they're injuncted and they get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Why are you getting frustrated? The only thing that the Law Society of Kenya is saying mm -hmm. is that follow the law. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, okay. So now one of the things that I believe affected me properly and in a correct manner when I was in school is when they were teaching us about the three arms of the government. So let me please educate you small. It's not going to be a very, very long speech or monologue, but I will break it down for you so you understand why we are trying to pick this apart and, and see if there is indeed one arm fighting with the other or if it's just friction or what indeed is going on. That's why we are here today. Ah, yeah, so we have the executive that includes the president, deputy president and the cabinet. So the president here uh, is the head of state, uh, government and commander in chief of the Kenya Defense Force, the chairperson of the National, National sorry, Security Council. Then we have the legislature that is the National Assembly and the Senate. Yeah, well, Kiona, KBC Channel 1 of Chazea, oh, live from National Assembly Senate. That is the legis legislature. Woo. It has a couple of members. It's the same order. 290 members uh, elected, 47 women representatives, 12 members nominated, etc., etc., etc. Then we have the judiciary. So this is divided into the superior courts and the subordinate courts. So the superior courts include Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, and the High Court, which the highest being the Supreme Court. The subordinate courts are the magistrates, Kadi courts, court martial, and tribunals. All right, so now fast forward. This Friday, or the past Friday rather, we had um, we saw picketing of members of the Law Society of Kenya, that is LSK. So why, why would you think, how would you explain that to someone who doesn't really understand what's going on right now before we draw the map? Okay, first of all, uh, the Law Society of Kenya is a statutory body. Mm -hmm. It is a body or an institution which is formed, so to speak, by the law. Mm -hmm. And we have a mandate uh, given to us by the law to uphold and respect the rule of law, uh, to uphold, promote the rule of law mm -hmm. and constitutionalism. Mm -hmm. What you just uh, from saying right now, there is a separation between the functions of the executive, the legislature, mm -hmm. and the judiciary. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain utterances that the head of state made, mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Ruto. Mm -hmm. And those utterances appeared to be as if he was encroaching mm -hmm. and casting aspersions mm -hmm. on the character of the judges we have mm -hmm. and also suggesting and i use the word suggesting very deliberately mm -hmm. suggesting that he is not going to respect the decisions of the court mm -hmm. now that is very very unfortunate mm -hmm. by a person who ought to know better mm -hmm. the head of state mm -hmm. he knows uh, that these three arms of government they work collaboratively, but they are separate. And what usually happens is that they are, si they are supposed to be checks, mm -hmm. checks and balances. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a mandate to make laws, but mm -hmm. the judiciary will tell parliament mm -hmm. that yes, you have a mandate to make laws, but you cannot make unconstitutional laws. Mm -hmm. We'll allow you to make laws, mm -hmm. but please, don't make unconstitutional laws. Mm -hmm. The executive, through the president, mm -hmm. has a mandate of creating policy, mm -hmm. 
implementing laws, mm -hmm. implementing policy. But they do not have a mandate of telling the legislature that this is the way you're supposed to make these laws. Mm -hmm. Or telling the judiciary that this is the way you're supposed to decide these cases. And now we are seeing a trend mm -hmm. where the legislature, the, the executive seems to be making certain suggestions. Mm -hmm. and, and this is really because um, it appears that it is the judiciary mm -hmm. which has, ha, has refused to budge. Mm -hmm. It's refused to say uh, that, um, fine, the executive has certain policies very good policies if you ask me mm -hmm. like um you know affordable housing mm -hmm. very good policy mm -hmm. but how is it being implemented mm -hmm. is the implementation of this policy going to affect the rights and freedoms of ordinary kenyans mm -hmm. across the board mm -hmm. That's what the court was actually saying. Mm -hmm. You cannot make a policy that discriminates mm -hmm. between um, people who are employed mm -hmm. and people who are not employed. Mm -hmm. So what the Law Society of Kenya did mm -hmm. is to take that legislation, mm -hmm. policy now transformed into legislation, and challenge that um, at the judiciary and the judiciary made its determination. Mm -hmm. Now, when the judiciary made its determination, mm -hmm. the executive and parliament, the executive and parliament um, challenged that decision at the court of appeal. Mm -hmm. They should wait for a decision to be made, mm -hmm. an independent decision to be made by the courts, mm -hmm. so that um, so that once a decision is made one way or another, they are supposed to follow it. Mm -hmm. What we see happening is the head of state sort of, um, the word is um, sort of threatening, mm -hmm. let me use that word, okay. threatening the judges that if you guys don't make a decision in accordance with the policies we want to implement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is completely unacceptable. We as advocates do not advocate, we do not, um, we are not going to condone that. Mm -hmm. Because when ordinary citizens, that Matatu driver mm -hmm. comes to me and tells me that this person that I was driving and this person in a VX mm -hmm. came and hit me and he was the one who was driving on the wrong side. He comes to me as an advocate so that I can take that matter to court and the court can decide on who was wrong. Mm -hmm. He does not expect that the VX driver mm -hmm. is going to stand and tell the judge, mm -hmm. you know, if you rule against me, things are going to be bad for you. Mm -hmm. That's totally unacceptable. It muddies the profession, the mm -hmm. profession that we practice, the oath that we take to mm -hmm. say the truth and to o uphold the rule of law. And I like something that the head of state, uh, Honorable Ruto, used to say mm -hmm. when, he was, um, when he was campaigning. And he said he's going to uphold the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Let him not go back on his word. Mm -hmm. Let him continue in a trend mm -hmm. that... Um, you know, instills confidence mm -hmm. in, the, in the general public, in the international community, mm -hmm. that um, he is going to respect our constitution and the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, I think this is a perfect time to set a disclaimer. But although one of my favorite things about this particular topic is the law is the law and the constitution is available for public consumption. However, anything that stems from this conversation that is any sentiments or innuendos does not reflect those of the station. However, the constitution, like I said, is very, very accessible to the public and to, okay, to you as the public, let me say it like that. All right, so I want us to draw a map. Yes. Mm -hmm. The High Court in 2023 found the housing levy illegal. 
Yes, and it stated that it was discriminatory, as you've just said, maybe, as it targets those in formal employment versus informal. Yeah. So a bench of three judges suspended the decision until January of this year, the 10th. We are currently on the 15th. So is the president, is it getting a bit skirmish or, or in, uncomfortable because we haven't heard anything from the said court or what do you think this uproar is about why did he come out and claim perhaps or point a finger and said perhaps maybe the opposition has something to do with this and they are in fact curbing development in the country despite his best efforts to make the country a better place to live in um f uh, okay um 10 days 15 days um my personal opinion is and uh, and what appears to be out there commentary from the newspapers and so on and so forth suggests that um, the that the executive and parliament are working on a bill mm -hmm. that is going to um, address the issues that were identified in the high court um, in the high court judgment mm -hmm. so I think um, perhaps new legislation is going to be brought in respect of the housing levy. Mm -hmm. But again, we need to understand that there is an appeal that has been filed in the, in the Court of Appeal, mm -hmm. and that appeal is yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. And this but, is by the government? Yeah, this mm -hmm. is by the government mm -hmm. and um, as an, uh, also an appendage by the legislature because okay. the legislature seems to be supporting, mm -hmm. because it's their legislation, they seem to be supporting this particular piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. um, like I said earlier, it is important for these two arms of government mm -hmm. to respect what is going to be the outcome mm -hmm. of that process, that mm -hmm. appeal process. Mm -hmm. um, it's good that they are coming up or formulating another piece of legislation which is going to um, address the shortcomings of the previous le legislation. Mm -hmm. We are going to have a look at that. The Law Society of Kenya is going to have a critical look at that. Mm -hmm. And we want to assure the public mm -hmm. that if there is any, um, if there is any whiff mm -hmm. of unconstitutionality. Whiff, uh, yes. just general gist, <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, if there is any unconstitutionality in that piece of legislation, mm -hmm. we are going to challenge it. Mm -hmm. We are going to challenge it. Mm -hmm. We do not, we are here to protect the interest mm -hmm. of the public. And the public are our clients, mm -hmm. and we are not afraid. Um, they, there is uh, a comment that was made uh, yesterday mm -hmm. by one of the senators mm -hmm. that he is not um, that he, they are going to ensure that you know government friendly government friendly people are elected to the law society of Kenya. Mm -hmm. But I would want to say to uh, the senator. Mm -hmm that the Law Society of Kenya is not the council of the Law Society of Kenya. Wow. It's all members. Mm -hmm. And all members actually make these decisions mm -hmm. through, the general, uh, through the general meeting. Mm -hmm. And Law Society of Kenya members as advocates are the ones who are going to stand up and say, that is wrong, that is unconstitutional. And we are not going to be afraid of doing that. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so we had or we saw the, His Excellency the President coming out and expressing, maybe, I want to say disdain, I don't know if it's too harsh, but he did express, uh, uh, he did express something. <laughs> uh, and, you know, publicly, yes. you know, in front of the media and uh, the public, the general public. And then a few days later, he seemed to retract it or, you know, come a bit softer, maybe he felt, or the uproar was a bit too much, and then he kind of, you know, kind of that, kind of that vibe, you know. Then we have His Excellency, the Deputy President, coming in and saying now he's going to file a petition on Thursday, the 18th of uh, January, that is Thursday this week, against uh, the judge who, if you remember at the time of debate, his, his funds were frozen, 
yes, t totaling up to I think approximately 200 and something in the million in the million range. So uh, what's going on? What do you think that that says? And then also you w during the picketing on Friday, we had His Honorable Kalonzo Musioka coming in with full regalia. Is that statement being made? What what is are there lines to read in between here? Um. Okay, I, I, I think I've had three questions from you. Yes, and sorry. The f and the, and the, and the <laughs> I first, got excited. Uh -huh. Yeah, the first question with regard to the president, mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Ruto, uh, he says something one time mm -hmm. and he seems to retract it mm -hmm. and Kwani Amna jokes. Mm -hmm. And I sort of laughed when I saw that mm -hmm. because I wondered, um, is he was he trying to test the waters mm -hmm. to see what is going to happen mm -hmm. and uh, very very interesting and what I'd want to remind Kenyans is um, and everybody really is that Honorable Ruto is a politician mm -hmm. very very good politician by mm -hmm. the way but um, like I said earlier he he is also the president of this country. Mm -hmm. This country has a constitution mm -hmm. and he ought to know better. There are certain things, I don't know whether he was excited. I don't know whether he was, um, he was just saying it for jokes, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, he, he ought to know better that certain things that he says mm -hmm. are taken very, very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. And the Law Society of Kenya took it seriously, mm -hmm. very seriously, and that's why we had the picketing. Mm -hmm. And you know, just to just just to also answer the the third question with mm -hmm. that is, when you see Kalonzo Musioka come in mm -hmm. um, and join the picketing, when you see others like. Um, uh, the former minister, the former minister Eugene Wamalwa joining in, mm -hmm. senior counsel joining mm -hmm. in. All these are advocates who are very, very respected mm -hmm. and they know their oath of office. Mm -hmm. I would not want to look at it as a political uh, gimmick mm -hmm. that they were dressed in, um, at least Kalonzo Musioka was dressed in uh, in legal regalia and coming to join in the pro uh, in in the protests, mm -hmm. I think he was just um, he he was just supporting mm -hmm. the position of the Law Society of Kenya mm -hmm. in terms of protecting and upholding the rule of law, mm -hmm. uh, and it's quite commendable that he did. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that uh, just because he's a member of the of the just because he's a member of the opposition or these people are members of the opposition they were trying to make a statement mm -hmm. if they were making their own statement mm -hmm. that's them mm -hmm. but what we were doing on friday mm -hmm. was to tell every kenyan including the president that everybody in this country is going to respect the constitution and the law that's why we were picketing mm -hmm. that's why we actually got police escort mm -hmm. because now we see that the police the police are um, respect the fact that the laws in which they are supposed to enforce mm -hmm. ought to be respected mm -hmm. in terms of what the deputy president um, his excellency uh, mr. Gashagwa mm -hmm. is saying or I said yesterday or the day before I think that's a very good thing mm -hmm. um, it appears as if he has some sort of evidence uh, regarding the judge. Mm -hmm. And it appears as if he has gathered that evidence mm -hmm. and he wants to present it to the Judicial Service Commission on Thursday. Mm -hmm. That is very good. That is procedure. That is in keeping with what the Constitution says mm -hmm. about the removal of a judge mm -hmm. in office. And, um, you know, the process in which uh, that particular uh, removal is supposed to, to, to take place. Mm -hmm. So if he has the evidence, mm -hmm. let him bring it. And I hope this is not, um, 
what do we usually call it? He's not bluffing mm -hmm. or he's not just saying it mm -hmm. for the sake of politics. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I always say in our, in our fraternity mm -hmm. is professionalism, not politics. Mm -hmm. So I hope that if he has evidence, he's going to use the correct channels mm -hmm. provided under the constitution mm -hmm. to bring a petition for the removal of that judge okay. if there is evidence. Mm -hmm. Now, what usually happens in that particular um, that particular process mm -hmm. is that the Judicial Service Commission will look at the evidence, the petition, mm -hmm. and the evidence that has been presented, and see whether there is something that merits the the a recommendation mm -hmm. to the president for the establishment of a tribunal to remove the judge, okay. and that is a process in itself. But one thing that I would also like to say is this. Mm -hmm. Judges everywhere in the world mm -hmm. have something, probably not everywhere, mm -hmm. you'd probably not have this in dictatorial countries, and Kenya is not a dictatorial country, but judges in Kenya mm -hmm. and in all constitutional democracies enjoy something called decisional independence. Mm -hmm. They are free to make certain decisions in for as long as those decisions are based on their understanding mm -hmm. on of the law. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's a very technical subject. Mm -hmm. I won't really get into it right now. But um I hope that having listened to what uh, the deputy president said, I hope that his petition is not just confined mm -hmm. to the decision that was made by the good judge, mm -hmm. but also some kind of conduct, mm -hmm. some kind of, um, some kind of, uh, you know, yeah, let me just use the word conduct, mm -hmm. which this particular judge uh, made against him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just before we close on that, I'd like to I'd like to just shine light on, on the timeliness of, of his filing the petition. Is it because His Excellency the President said something, or are the wheels of justice painfully slow? What's going on? I don't think, I do not want to say mm -hmm. that it's, it is a matter of timing, uh -huh. because we need to acknowledge and the Chief Justice, because I've spoken a lot about Parliament and the Executive, mm -hmm. but our Chief Justice needs to acknowledge mm -hmm. that there are certain um, bad apples mm -hmm. within the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And not only judges and magistrates, mm -hmm. but also judicial staff mm -hmm. who are promoting a kind, a culture of impunity mm -hmm. and corruption. These are allegations or these are things that we can say honestly and with conviction that they are true? Well, there, some are allegations uh -huh. and uh, I know most of the people, most of the advocates who practice with me in courts mm -hmm. know that these are things that usually happen. Okay. And it is very, very important. Mm -hmm. You know, Valentine, mm -hmm. where there's smoke, there's usually fire. fire. Yes. And I think that it is time for the Chief Justice to introspect mm -hmm. and ask herself, why are these allegations being made against the judiciary? Is there something that is amiss? Or is it that um, we are just a soft target mm -hmm. for politicians and other people to to, you know, to, are we a soft target? So, where they smoke, this fire. Mm -hmm. And I would say personally that there are, I have had allegations mm -hmm. of corruption within the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And if these allegations are there, I think it is very, very important mm -hmm. for the Chief Justice to tell, to rally her people in the judiciary and tell them that we are not going to condone 
any forms of corrupt corruption mm -hmm. right from the head which who's the chief justice honorable to, mm -hmm. to principal judges to heads of stations everybody should say no to cases of impunity and corruption so that whenever we are talking about the judiciary the judiciary is so clean mm -hmm. that everybody has confidence in going to the judiciary you spoke about um you spoke about the wheels of justice mm -hmm. grinding very slowly. Mm -hmm. That is also something which needs to be addressed within the judiciary. Mm -hmm. why, is, why is it taking, and I, uh, and I think last week there was an issue of the case where the young boy had killed his entire family, mm -hmm. why it had taken too long mm -hmm. for, for that hearing, for mm -hmm. that trial to begin. Mm -hmm. you know, these are things that the Chief Justice needs to consider mm -hmm. and the relevant persons need to be called into a meeting and asked mm -hmm. what is happening here. Um, and not only the judiciary, by the way, mm -hmm. also the, the investigating agencies, the prosecuting agency, the, mm -hmm. DPP, uh, the DPP, the DCI, the police, all need to have a conversation as to how these cases you know, justice needs to be dispensed fairly quickly mm -hmm. so that we have a judiciary or a justice system that seems to be, you know, grinding, you know, fairly fast mm -hmm. so that, you know, there's that, um, there's usually this uh, maxim, but it's not a maxim or it's a proverb or a saying that, you know, justice delayed is justice denied. Mm -hmm. So that those those things need to be addressed. Okay. Yes. All right, so I, I really don't want to finish this conversation, but in the interest of time, I will ask you one last one, maybe in parts. Yes, so please. we are about to see the elections for the Lost Society of Kenya. That yes. is three weeks, give or take? Uh, six weeks. Oh, six weeks. Yes, right. yes. Really give, give those three weeks, <laughs> another three weeks, thanks. <laughs> So in six weeks, you guys are going to have elections. Yes. And I understand that um, this is something that will be under a lot of scrutiny, yes. especially by politicians, you yes. know, because now there's all this uh, fri I want friction. It's kind of harsh, but it is the reality. So what does that mean for the elections in, as in general? And what do elections really entail? It must be a sight to see, to see lawyers debate. Mm -hmm. It must be cool. Uh, very, very cool, uh -huh. by the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, if we'll be having a, a, a debate, I should be inviting you. Oh, you should. I should. You really should. Uh, very, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of politicians in the country, it mm -hmm. means nothing. Mm -hmm. It means nothing. I'd like to say this. Law Society of Kenya is one of the most independent organizations in I this country so such pride yes uh -huh. yes 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 mm -hmm. very very independent individuals mm -hmm. we manage our own things even politicians who are um, politicians who are lawyers uh, Senator Cheryl Gay is a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I don't want to assume that what he was saying yesterday or the day before, he was convicted of it. Mm -hmm. We have a very, very independent institution. And I will tell you that if lawyers themselves feel or perceive mm -hmm. as if they are sort of being captured mm -hmm. by either the legislature, mm -hmm. executive, or even the judiciary, mm -hmm. members of the Law Society of Kenya are going to reject wow. a certain candidate. Mm -hmm. We are a totally independent, and we thrive in that. Mm -hmm. We thrive in that because we understand that our work really is to protect the interests of the public who come for justice. Mm -hmm. And justice to one person is not justice to the other person. That's true. It's construed a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. It cuts across, and it's what the courts usually say that this, now I've done some justice. But if you're not happy with it, you appeal, you appeal. And if you lose, mm -hmm. I mean, you accept. Mm -hmm. But 
the executive and the legislature work a little bit differently mm -hmm. because the legislature is supposed to work a l more independently because they're supposed to make laws that cut across mm -hmm. but a little bit differently because there are certain interests that they are trying to you know propagate mm -hmm. to advance like the housing levy you're trying to advance that interest and you would un advance it by all means mm -hmm. you're trying to make legislation and you think that this legislation is good legislation mm -hmm. you've debated it in the floor of the house so you sort of um want to advance it mm -hmm. but it's only the courts which will come in and say, no, 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 no. We think that in our own interpretation, we think this is wrong, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And who take, that, who take these things to the courts? Mm -hmm. It's us lawyers. And one side will be arguing for, and the other side will be arguing against. against. And next time, I would be arguing against, mm -hmm. and somebody else would be arguing for. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's very, very important to us, as a, as a fraternity, for our representatives, not really leaders, mm -hmm. but there's people who speak for us, mm -hmm. um, are very independent minded. Mm -hmm. What I usually call intellectual independence. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you don't just accept what you're being told mm -hmm. because that is what you're being, being told. So in terms, of the, in terms of the election, I think it's going to be a free and fair election. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, we are going to be infiltrated mm -hmm. by people who want to work for the government. Mm -hmm. And after all, there are 13 representatives who are going to be in the council. Mm -hmm. So all of them cannot uh, think the same. Mm -hmm. And some of them and most of them are going to check each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way, as a council in the past two years, that's the way we've worked. Mm -hmm. And I think we've done a stellar job. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. All right, okay. He's answered on every base. I just as you were speaking, it just came to my mind that yes. I'm, I'm really curious about something, and maybe this is something that will benefit the viewer. And I promise this is my last question, guys, although this conversation might continue after we finish, because, you know, I like to know things. So I want to put you in a scenario where someone has maybe a petty misdemeanor. Yes, and, and whether they're in holding or not, or they're out in a bond or bail, so they're supposed to be heard in court. Mm -hmm. And then let's say someone else who uh, is in family court. And you know, literally the wheels of justice move really, really slowly. So you can find someone who's been in court for even 14 years and, and up, yeah? But then you have something that happens in the country, you know, that affects the nation. Let's say elections, uh, you're taking the, some, the what, like we had actually the, the previous elections, how they went to court. Are politicians or are astute people, do they get their cases expedited at the expense of the normal person in court? Yes and no. And that's why I think I spoke about corruption in the <laughs> beginning. Really circling back all yes. the way. Uh -huh. Corruption is, uh, I, I think, I think we talk about corruption, mm -hmm. but we really don't understand what, what it, it is. is. Mm. You see, when a politician brings their case, and this is you know, probably done, by, done through the judiciary, mm -hmm. brings their case and it's expedited. Mm -hmm. And a petty offender you know, stole, stole um, maize chicken. or chicken. <laughs> And that person is in the justice system for more than six months, mm. I would say. It's really, really sad. Mm -hmm. And this is something, and it happens. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I, I'm a truthful person. Mm -hmm. It happens. Mm -hmm. We need to find a way of reading ourselves. Mm -hmm of this vice of um you know trying to steal a match mm -hmm. uh trying to you know get some kind of an advantage because we are we need to look at things as if all of us are equal mm -hmm. 
whether we have a little bit more money than another person. Mm -hmm. um, avoid that tempta temptation of removing some money from your pocket mm -hmm. so that your things can be done faster. Mm -hmm. And let that person who sits in that office mm -hmm. actually demand from that person mm -hmm. who sits from that office mm -hmm. that I need service. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. If you live in the village, what is the benefit of you uh -huh. going to KPLC, for example? And this is just an example, uh -huh. by way of analogy. Uh -huh. Going to KPLC and giving them, they are supposed to electrify the entire line, uh -huh. but then you go and give, because you have the money, going uh -huh. to give them 30,000 bob uh -huh. for them to pull electricity power uh -huh. to your house when your neighbors do not have uh, power uh -huh. doesn't make any sense uh -huh. because you're going to be driving through darkness in order for you to get to your house uh -huh. if there is insecurity for example you're still going to be affected in fact you you create or you amass attention towards yourself mm -hmm. so this thing in the judiciary of the wheels of justice grinding slowly mm -hmm. and others fairly faster mm -hmm. it needs to stop and i would tell this to the chief justice when i meet with her mm -hmm. she needs to address it very very seriously mm -hmm. and she needs to be very firm about it i mm -hmm. know she's a good person mm -hmm. i know she is she deserves the position she is currently holding mm -hmm. very good judge mm -hmm. but she needs to address those aspersions mm -hmm. those allegations mm -hmm. those incidences mm -hmm. that are actually giving the judiciary a bad name mm -hmm. and that should be her legacy mm -hmm. i think that should be her legacy okay yes so in a sentence what would you like your legacy to be see let us hope that you know all goes well during the elections uh, this particular season what, what would you want your legacy to be if i am not re-elected mm -hmm. which i think i will be re-elected mm -hmm. i'd like my members, our members, to remember me as a person who represented progress. Mm -hmm. When we were sitting in council, I think I lived up to the agenda that I had put across. And I always advised the president of the society correctly, mm -hmm. truthfully. Mm -hmm. I always stood for professionalism, mm -hmm. things, member services to be given to members professionally, mm -hmm. efficiently, e effectively, phone calls to be picked up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's the branches, what are we doing with our branches? Let us take some activities at the national level to the branches so that um, they feel the presence of the society. Mm -hmm. um, let us. Um, let us listen to what the branches of the law society are saying because mm -hmm. it is in the branches that we get to understand the specific issues that our members are um, are going through at that branch level mm -hmm. so i think i represent progress mm -hmm. i think the law society of kenya has come has come out very very strongly mm -hmm. as a champion of constitutionalism and the rule of law and my members would understand mm -hmm. that that alone that alone represents welfare mm -hmm. of the society mm -hmm. the welfare of advocates mm -hmm. in fact lawyers don't need any other kind of welfare mm -hmm. as long as people ordinary mwananchi understand that these are the people who champion mm -hmm. for the rule of law for constitutionalism mm -hmm. for people to follow uh, the laid down procedures and so on and so forth, people will always be coming to lawyers when they have problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, thank you. I did ask for a sentence, but it was very, very well packaged, so that's fine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry about it's that. It's okay, it's yes. okay. okay. The more I know, the better. The more we know, the better. All right, thank you so very much for having this conversation with me. It's very riveting. Yeah. 
yes, I wish you all the best. And I still am going to hold you on to that invitation that you promised me. You guys saw it, right? Yes. Honestly, I don't think I'd be a lawyer. I, I, it, would be, it was one of my dreams at one point in this education system. But me, I don't think I'd be a lawyer. I don't think I'd be a lawyer. Anyway, anyway, thank you once again. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to conclude it, but we still have uh, so much more for you. So Brand Soccer 101 is about to come through with a conversation with, a, I, mm, let me not even spill the beans, just go to our socials at White 5 on Facebook, White 5 4 channel on X, White 5 4 underscore channel on the gram, and of course, all those other wonderful platforms that entail social media. So from me to you, I'll see you when I see you, but we're not done with you yet, so don't go away.